In space, as in life, there's no smoke without a massive galaxy? Take a look at this incredible example of gravitational lensing that has just been observed by JWST. A foreground galaxy that's closer to us is visible in blue, but the main target is the orange ring, which is a distant galaxy called SPT 0418-47. The galaxy that's closer to us is so massive that it's distorting the path of light as it travels from the more distant galaxy. The alignment of the galaxies is pretty perfect from our point of view on Earth, so the result is a ring shape in the galaxy, what we call an Einstein ring. It's one of the finest examples of gravitational lensing, and this one is absolutely beautiful. It's not the first time we've ever seen this galactic marvel. It was actually discovered back in 2020. In fact, we have good enough models to understand this galaxy and unwarp the ringed one and predict what it might have looked like if the light wasn't being distorted by the other galaxy. As well as distorting the light of the distant one, the act of lensing it can also magnify the galaxy too. And so lenses are an excellent place to spot incredibly distant galaxies that might otherwise be too faint to see. That's the case here. The orange galaxy is an impressive 12 billion light years away, but we're seeing it nice and bright with JWST thanks to that lensing. I'd say the most interesting revelation so far from pointing JWST at this system is the discovery of complex organic chemicals in the distant orange galaxy. Now, organic doesn't mean life, but rather here they found things called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Mm. These are large molecules that are usually found in things like soot and smoke here on Earth, but they can also form near young and massive stars that emit a lot of ultraviolet light. Now, this ultraviolet light wouldn't show up in JWST data since the telescope is sensitive to infrared light but the energy can help form these large hydrocarbons in space. Previous studies have spotted areas in the galaxy where stars might be forming, although they hadn't seen these massive hydrocarbons before. The presence of these molecules suggests that the galaxy was making stars nice and early in the universe's history. In fact, when the universe was only a billion and a half years old, our new ring-shaped friend already had the mass of the Milky Way galaxy we live in today. More details of the molecules are still a bit mysterious for now, so let's stay tuned for more on this one in the future. Another incredibly cool recent JWST discovery is a water world called GJ486b, observed with the spectrograph NERSPEC. It's an exoplanet orbiting a red dwarf star. It completes an orbit in about one and a half days, and it's remarkably similar in size to Earth. It's only about 30% larger than our planet, which is pretty close in planetary terms. The same can't be said when we compare masses though. And this planet is about three times the mass of the Earth, meaning it's a much denser planet than us. Also, even though a red dwarf star is much cooler than our sun, this planet is pretty close to its star, and so it's probably still way too hot to sit in the habitable zone. This is the area around the star where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist on the surface. While this one is probably a little too hot and too close, its surface temperature is about 430 degrees Celsius. JWST still pointed its spectrographs at the planet to see if it could see any specific signatures of chemicals or molecules in the atmosphere. Of course, this sounds easy in principle, but real data is always a little bit messier. And if we look at the actual data that came from JWST, shown here as the white circles, things aren't that easy to decipher. If the planet has an atmosphere, the best model the team could find was a water vapor based atmosphere. But this idea is a little surprising since the temperatures are so warm on the planet that it would be impressive if it could actually hold onto water without it being boiled off into space. This model is shown in blue on the plot, but it wasn't the only idea they had. The other theory is that the star itself might have patches of water vapor on its surface, kind of like the sunspots we see on our own sun, and that could be where this signal is coming from. I love this idea because it just sounds so crazy. Imagining water vapor on the burning surface of a star sounds kind of crazy, but it could really happen. In a model like that, shown in yellow, the planet doesn't have an atmosphere itself, 
but we're seeing the imprint of water spots on the star in the spectrum. The idea of water spots on the star and the planet having a water vapour based atmosphere have a pretty similar fit to the data, despite sounding like quite different ideas. So we can't yet reach a proper conclusion. I guess that's one of the joys of science. We rarely get a concrete answer so fast, so we just have to keep playing the game. If the water atmosphere was confirmed though, it would be a pretty huge result as it would be one of the first detections of water vapour on an Earth-sized rocky planet. And it could even have implications for where we search for life beyond Earth. Similar results were actually found for an ultra-hot gas giant planet called WASP-18b as well. This is a planet 10 times more massive than Jupiter, over 2,700 degrees Celsius, and that one orbits its star in just 23 hours. Again, a planet that's very hot and very close to its star, and by studying its spectrum, and mapping the temperature of the planet, we found that water might be present in that atmosphere as well. This is a mystery that seems like it will definitely require more investigating, and it might have a fascinating conclusion. I'll keep you updated with any more information as and when it comes, so be sure to subscribe. Until next time though, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!